Hi, and welcome to Crossroads at Home. I'm Steve Cordell, lead pastor, and we're so glad you're worshiping with us today. Take a moment in the chat. Let us know where you're watching us from today. And let's prepare our hearts to worship by listening to the words of Psalm 66, verses 1 to 3. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Let's worship the Lord. Welcome to Crossroads at Home. My name is Karen and I'm the Kids Zone Director of the Boyce Road Campus. We're so glad you're joining us today. Crossroads is one church in many locations, worshiping weekly at our outdoor gatherings as well as online in homes all around the world. Whether this is your first time here or you have been here a while, please take out your phone and text XR to 313131. You'll get a link to a communicator card to let us know you're here and how we could be praying for you this week. 
Again, text XR to 313131 to get a link to the card. To keep up to date with everything that's happening at Crossroads, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel for encouraging content throughout the week. The Crossroads app is a great way to stay connected and also grow in your faith. You can just search Crossroads Pittsburgh in the App Store to find our app. I'm excited to invite you to be a part of our six weeks spiritual growth journey called A Hope in the Future. During this time, we'll learn to lay hold of the hope that God has for us in Christ and join with a few other people to extend that hope into our community. Here's how you can get the most of those six weeks starting September 13th. First, worship with us weekly, in person or online. Second, join together in a small group, either in person or online. Small groups are a great way to be in community with others. And third, meet daily with God. The Crossroads app will provide you with daily devotional videos and a digital way to journal. I encourage you to sign up today. When you text XR to 313131, you'll also get a link to sign up for A Hope in the Future. You can also sign up directly in the Crossroads app. Your generosity continues to help us be the church in action. We're seeing new people find hope in Jesus through both our outdoor and online services each week. The easiest way to give is on the app or online. Just go to xr.church give. It's safe, simple, and secure, and most people choose to give this way. However, you can also give by mailing a check to the address that's on the screen. Let's pray this prayer out loud together. Father, as we receive today's offering, we are believing you for understanding and wisdom courage and discernment, insight and revelation, open doors, favor and breakthrough. We pray that you would lift us above every obstacle, doubt and fear. We thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs. We trust in you and pray that you would multiply our gifts for the sake of your kingdom. Amen.
Let's pray together. Lord God, we are thankful for your presence with us at every moment of our lives. We're thankful for your Holy Spirit who fills us, leads us, guides us. Lord, we're thankful that you're present with us in every moment of our lives, the joyous ones and the difficult ones. And Lord, we're thankful that you've been present with the teachers and students of our community as they return to school, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've been giving guidance and protection, and we pray for that in the coming week as well. We also pray, Lord, for those who are suffering the impact of Hurricane Laura. We ask, Father, that you would be strengthening families right now, those who may have been separated, Lord, that they would be reunited. Lord, for those that uh, are suffering great loss of homes and businesses, Lord, give them courage, let them not lose hope or despair. Lord, we pray for those who are working recovery, Lord, protect them, strengthen them, guide them. And Lord, uh, we pray that you would open our ears uh, to your word to us today. That, Lord, we would open every part of our heart and our being to your presence, to your love, and we pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to week two of Holy Ghost Stories. For thousands of years, people have told stories around campfires, and we were set to shoot at an actual campfire, but the rain came, and so here we are at our video campfire. I'm sitting here with Paul Martini, and he's going to share some true Holy Ghost stories with us. Now, Paul is a pastor at Life Center Church. He has also been discipled by Randy Clark, and he's an evangelist. I think the first time I met you, Paul, was about maybe three years ago, and it was out at Global Awakening, and I saw you speak, and I thought you would be perfect to come in and talk to us about this subject. So Paul, is there anything else that I should add about your introduction? Well, I'm just honored to be here. Um, you know, I, I, I'm married, I have six children, um, had a full head of hair before <laughs> I had those kids, um, but no, that, I think you did a great job, Christy. Okay, super. So as we're setting this up, um, I'd just like to get your take on a true Holy Ghost story. So um, basically when we talk about the, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, um, what is that like for you um, when you interact with the Holy Spirit? Could you demystify that a little bit for us? Yeah, you know, actually uh, just to tell a Holy Ghost story would be more to tell my story in relationship to the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, I grew up in a church that um, often had a good um, understanding and, you know, talked about God the Father really well. Mm -hmm. uh, had, you know, I understood the story of Jesus Christ, the Son, but when it came to things of the Holy Spirit, it was often so wrapped in mystery, and maybe they didn't have amazing verbiage for it, mm -hmm. and so I kind of always strayed away from that. Mm -hmm. And until I realized that actually, uh, as I studied and I encounter God in such a significant way that the Holy Spirit is God. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's a, it's a orthodoxical Christian creed. It's a standard Christian uh, statement that we, we uh, serve God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And, um, and it's not three gods, but one God, three persons, one God. And um, you know, I used to have a, a, a Jewish uh, friend, and we wouldn't have we would have these friendly discussions. I would call them not debates, but discussions. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would have loved if I became Jewish, you know. But um, and so I would try to talk to him about the Lord. And when I was getting married, he said, "You know, Paul, uh, I can't go into a church." He says, "Technically, I could go to a mosque, but I can't go to a church. I wouldn't. I can't go to your wedding." I said, "Why not?" He said, "Because you are you serve a polytheistic God." You serve a God of, you know, have multiple gods. Uh, and I said, no, I don't, I serve one God. He said, no, you serve three gods. I said, no, I serve one God. He said, no, you serve three gods. I said, no, I serve one God. <laughs> he said, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that's three. I said, no, that's one. And he said, how so? And I said, well, you know, the best way I could ever have heard it or been explained to me is math. And he said, math? I said, that's right, math. I said, it's not one plus one plus one equals three. 
I said it's 1 times 1 times 1 equals 1. And um, even that statement doesn't really encompass the Trinity. Um, you know, God is infinite and we are finite. And for us to understand the totality of who God is in our finite, finite minds is impossible. And, but when it comes to things uh, of the, the Trinity, we do serve uh, God the Holy Spirit as well. And so it is uh, very okay to you know, talk about the Holy Spirit in this context, even though sometimes we're not as familiar with it. Um, and so obviously we know that, uh, you know, we know God is omnipresent, He's everywhere all the time, but according to scripture, um, God the Father is in heaven, mm -hmm. and Jesus Christ ascended, you know, from earth to heaven uh, after He was risen from the dead. And uh, so He, according to scripture, is seated at the right hand of the Father. And who's been poured out unto us? The Holy Spirit. And because we, the Holy Spirit's been poured out unto us, when we receive the Spirit of Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and that's why I always used to hear in Sunday school, you know, who lives in your heart? And they would say, you know, Jesus Christ. And that's true. But how is that true? Well, the Holy Spirit fulfills the message of Christ. So to have the Christ is to have the Holy Spirit in you. To have the Holy Spirit is to have Christ within you. So first I wanna say that when we receive Christ, we have the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, uh, will often speak to me in a still small voice. You know, it's oftentimes like an impression, mm -hmm. you know, a thought that's not my thought. I wasn't thinking it. I wasn't, you know, uh, I was have on a mission maybe to go to the grocery store and pick up some eggs and milk because my wife sent me out. And while I'm at the grocery store, you know, I had this impression, encourage that woman. Mm -hmm. And I go, is that God? Is that me? Is that the devil? You know, that, when I first heard that thought where I just, I, when I realized the Holy Spirit, that God could speak to me, I, you know, I, I was just so amazed by it. And then it happened. Mm -hmm. And I go, and, and I have this choice. I'm like, well, it's either God, it's either me, or maybe it's the devil. What, which one is it? And, I, you know, it seemed like an eternity. But um, uh, it was probably only 30 seconds. And I go, okay. I'm, I'm struggling here, I'm fighting myself, and I realize, I don't wanna do this. <laughs> this isn't me, I don't wanna do it. So I'm like, well, then it's, I know it's not me. And then I thought, well, it's either the devil just trying to distract me or get me, or it's God. And, and I thought, well, wait a second, I've been taught to love, and everything I do, you know, don't have an agenda, um, but to love. And I thought, well, if I'm gonna encourage this person, and I'm gonna share the gospel with them, then it's got to be in love, and the devil would hate that. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, well, it's not the devil. It could be me missing it. Right. And so I took that step, and I just reached out to that uh, woman, and I just said, hey, I, you know, I don't know what you've been going through, but I felt the Lord to tell me to encourage you, and I felt that you know, there's hope for you in this time, and... Um, and can, is there anything I can do to pray with you to help you? And, you know, in that moment, she just opened up to me and um, she, you know, was going through this really significant time. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've been in these little moments yeah. where it's not this big audible voice, right. you know, and oftentimes we wait for that. Right. Sometimes it's an impression. Sometimes yeah. God will highlight something to me where I'll, I'll notice something. Right. Sometimes I get like a daydream. Sure. You know, I get this all the time where I'm, you know, maybe I'm walking or I'm uh, getting ready in the morning or I'm driving to work and I, you know, we, we use that time and I feel like God knows that we're like stuck in the car. Right. You know, so right. he could say whatever he wants to us mm -hmm. and there's nothing we can do. We shouldn't be looking at our phones, so we don't have that. And, you know, you're, you're focused on the road, but, and God will oftentimes start speaking to you while you're driving in the car and you might not even realize it, but if you realize, if you turn your affections towards God, I have the faith that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I remember this one time, I was walking by a dry cleaner. Right. And, um, and I was actually on a mission to just share God's love. And just, I was like, God, I know you wanna evangelize. And so I wanted to just go out and, and just share the love of God with people. I didn't have much to do that day. So I went out, I'm in the mall, and I pass this dry cleaners. And there's this girl at the counter and I see her, I have this like daydream. Just in my mind's eye, I just see her at night holding a little baby who won't stop crying. And then it goes away. Mm -hmm. 
and I had the same thing. Was like, huh, was that me? Mm -hmm. Was that God? And I, I struggled, and I thought, well, the only way I could figure this out is if I try. Mm -hmm. And if, again, if I do it in love, then it would be, you know, you know, it's it's hard to fail if it's done in love. Right. And so I, 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 you know, went up to the dry cleaner counter. There was nobody in there, mm -hmm. and she was on the phone. And I, and I, you know, I didn't have any clothes with me, so that was a big problem. <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be so awkward. So I wasn't ready. I was still nervous. I was like, um, you know, she's like, can I? Help? She was, she wouldn't get off the phone. She was like, can I help you? And I was like. Um, what price is your shirts? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> how much does it cost to get a shirt done? <laughs> and then she's like, a dollar ninety nine or whatever. I can remember. I was like, oh, uh, what about your pants? You know. And and then after uh, a couple seconds, I thought, man, I'm probably really weirding this person out. I said, let me just get this. Over. I said, you know what? I was just honest with you. I said, I was walking by. I'm a Christian, and as I was walking by, I saw this picture of you holding this child that was crying in the middle of the night and you seemed desperate. And I wanted to, you to know that God's with you and if, if there's anything I could pray for you about. She went like this. Now, I, I thought she would have been like, get out of here, you, you know. <laughs> what do you th who do you think you are, you know, because it's possible. And if that happened, honestly, Christy, then maybe I get humbled a little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. maybe I could use a little humility. Maybe I just go, well, I tried, you know. Uh -huh. But she goes, I'm going to have to call you back. And she hangs up with her friend. And she says, that's me. I have a little boy. And, um, and he's colicky and all this stuff. And I said, well, God's got peace for you today. I said, give me your hand. And she stretched her counter across the hand. And again, no one was there. And I prayed with her and just prayed for her letter to Jesus and you know, tears, everything. It was the most beautiful story. Yeah. And I just wonder, you know, oftentimes God will speak to us if we're willing to let him use us mm -hmm. and move powerfully like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's such a new message for some people too. I can remember being fascinated about 20 years ago, recognizing that God wants to speak to us through his spirit. And, you know, truly, how can you be in relationship with somebody if they never speak to you? And so I think that's powerful for people to know that God wants to speak to them. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I think, you know, I say this um, uh, in, in, some, uh, in one of my messages, you know, um, this is the word of God. It's, it's inspired, it's his word, it's, you know, they, they call it the Logos word of God, you know. And, um, and we need to read this word. This is our plumb line. You know, if, if, if my friend came up to me and said, Paul, you know, the spirit said to divorce my wife and marry the secretary, I'd say, whoa, that's not the, you're listening to the wrong spirit. Why? Because it, 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 it com comes against the character of God in his word. Mm -hmm. This is our plumb line. Yeah. This is how we know what is the word of God and what's not the word of God. Um, one time I was, one of my first cars I bought, I was young, and I'm driving, and I just get it out of the lot, and I'm driving down, and I'm listening to a great song, and this is, you know, it's with a CD player and a cassette player, if you get the, mm -hmm. the time of mm -hmm. this, this car. <laughs> I do. And, uh, <laughs> and I remember listening to it, and there was this little button I saw on the dash, and it said stereo, and I hit it, and all of a sudden it went, vroom. And it was like, I didn't even realize I wasn't listening in, in stereo. Mm -hmm. And I often say it's like, when we listen to the Logos Word of God, mm -hmm. and we listen to the Rhema Word, His actual voice, mm -hmm. it's like listening in stereo. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes we get scared because we think, oh, well, how do we know if it's God's voice? Well, it will never contradict His Word. Mm -hmm. And this is our plumb line, and, and our pastors help us, you know, uh, make sure that we listen correctly. But, yeah, so... I think you're right. It's all about relationship. It's about communication. Mm -hmm. And not only do we get to speak to him in prayers, but we also get to wait and listen. Mm -hmm. And I love how you frame that up. Um, so we say to our folks that at the end of our services, you are sent in love and power. Wow. And so that's really um, understanding that that's the power of the Holy Spirit. And I love how you say, um, if it's in love, then okay, we're gonna, we're gonna try this. But um, so can you share maybe um, how you've approached folks? Um, like I, I like your approach and I think, 
you know, when we start practicing, um, yeah. that stretches us a little bit. So maybe even just share a few stories of, uh, about how you make that approach when you know that God's speaking to you to do so. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I want to encourage everyone to just try. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, John Wimber famously said, I'm sure you guys have heard maybe, uh, you know, that faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Um, and, and what he's essentially saying is that oftentimes there's risk involved when it comes to stepping out in faith. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, you know, there is that time where, and, and the only way you get used to that is by doing it. And mm-hmm. when you do it in love, it's so much easier when you say, look, I have no agenda here. Mm-hmm. People can sense agenda. Mm-hmm. They can sense they're, tr- they're being sold stuff every minute of the day through social media, through commercials, through TV, through advertising. I mean, I forget the statistic for how many advertising, a- advertisements come through our eyes. So they can sense when there's an agenda involved. Um, so what I do is I say, God, I just want to love on people. Mm-hmm. I want to unite people to you. Mm-hmm. And I want to see people restored. Mm-hmm. And so I don't have an agenda. I don't have so many people I need to speak to. I, don't, I just want to go out and do it. And I just want to say this is that I often will get things wrong. And God shows up when I get a word of knowledge, what we call the word of knowledge wrong. And a word of knowledge is referenced in 1 Corinthians 12 as a gift of the Spirit. And, um, and it's basically a supernatural understanding or insight to someone's uh, uh, it usually issue that you have no understanding by any natural mo- means. Like if someone's limping and I say, hey, there's something wrong with your leg, that's not a word of knowledge. Right, right. <laughs> you know? But if I, if I get a word of knowledge that there's something wrong with their leg and I ask them and they say, yeah, I had an accident, mm-hmm. you know, that's a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit. But there's been so many times where I've approached people. Um, I'll, I'll give you uh, uh, an example where I approached someone and I got the word of knowledge wrong, but God showed up in a big way. Mm-hmm. I, um, I see this guy, I'm walking down the street, he's leaning against the laundromat, mm-hmm. and I pass him. I see him, I feel like he's getting highlighted to me and I'm not able to approach him yet. I don't have enough courage yet. I'm still working on it. And I go, I don't know what I'm gonna say to him yet. So then I pass him the other way. I do this often. (laughs) And then I pass him again and finally I start going in. I start going towards him and I I think I have a word knowledge that his shoulder's bothering a slight impression. Mm -hmm. So as I approach him, he starts walking away from me and he's going towards the parking lot. And so I keep following and say, hey man, he's like, I'm good. He doesn't even know what I'm about to say. I said hey, is there something wrong with your shoulder? And now I'm walking towards him. He's walking away. He goes, no, I'm okay. <laughs> and I said, um, and all of a sudden, this car comes up. I said, well, I just want to pray for you. And he goes, I'm okay. And he jumps in the car that was picking him up, and he leaves. And so now I'm walking from the front of the laundromat to the parking lot. Well, I, I go, well, I guess I got it wrong. And I turn around, and when I turn around, I see this girl. And she's in the driver's seat of her car. The car doors open and she's sobbing Mm -hmm. and I look back and I go what's wrong with you Uh and she said I just lost my baby Mm -hmm. and it was like this compassion of God came on me and I knelt right beside her and I said listen I want you to know that even when you're in the middle you know even if you make your bed in hell God is with you and um, and he's he feels your loss and Right there, I was able to tell her about Jesus, minister. She received the Lord right there, and mm-hmm. we connected her with a, a, a female pastor in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just me and her. It was just this beautiful sure. moment. And it was like, wow, off of a wrong word of knowledge, God showed up because my agenda was love. Yeah. And so I think if it's in love, even when you get it wrong, I, I've done it uh, where, you know, in the grocery store, just because you should do it as you live, you right. know? Dream with God. You know, sometimes uh, my friend taught me this. I, I lay on my bed and I think about my day. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to the bank today. I'm going to go to the grocery store. And I think about the person in the bank. And I think about what would I say to them? Mm. How do I approach them? Yeah. And then when I go up to the teller, I go, you know, I was thinking about you today. Is there anything I can pray for you about? Mm-hmm. And they go, oh, you were? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and all of a sudden they'll, they'll start opening up to you. Um, I, I love to dream with God about what he can do. And the Holy Spirit uses all of those moments mm-hmm. 
So I hope I answered your question. You sure did, and I love that, um, thinking about the places where you live and where you work and where you play, and we have added where you learn, um, yeah. that God wants to move in those areas and he wants to use us. We are, we are his primary tool to reach people where they're at, so that's cool. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think the Holy Spirit is, um, I think he, you know, if we allow him, he'll, 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 he'll do what we allow, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I always say, you know, um, all, too often we become ponds. You know, pond is where water comes in and never leaves. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever been around a pond, it becomes stagnant, yeah. it becomes perverse, it's not very pleasant. But we were always meant to be rivers. Jesus said, rivers of living water will flow from your bellies. And what is a river? A river is someone that receives and releases. And so I think that sometimes, maybe as Christians, even in my life too, when we go and we just receive, we receive, we receive, and we never release what we receive, we become stagnant. We become a bit, you know, yucky <laughs> and mucky. Yeah. And really the answer is to release. Yeah. And even when I haven't, maybe shared with someone in a long time or, or listened to the Holy Spirit and, mm -hmm. and when it comes to power evangelism, I always, um, and I all of a sudden do it, I go, my goodness, this is the best feeling in the world. Why don't I do this all the right. time? Because in that moment, I actually released the living water I've received mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit showed up. And, and you know, I always think, you know, and just in my own life, it's like the Holy Spirit loves to um, step in where our, where our um, physical abilities stop, because that's where we need him, yeah. you know? So it's like, well, you know, there's no other, other way that could do this but God. Right. And, and I think when we give him more God opportunities, mm -hmm. you see more God things happen. Mm -hmm. That's so good, it's so good. He does, he shows up in our weaknesses. I think we like to study our strengths and know our strengths and know what we're good at, and God's like, okay, yeah, we're not gonna need that today because you're gonna rely on me in this. And um, Man, it makes your heart beat fast when you step out and do it, but that's really um, what he's calling us to do is rely on him. Yeah, and I think it's really important because it makes God become so tangible mm -hmm. and so real beyond what we've really possibly have experienced. You know, so a lot of us experience his, his realness through uh, a, an overwhelming feeling of love. Um, maybe we get the Holy Ghost goosebumps, some people yeah. call him, you know, you feel his presence, you just feel his peace, his warmth inside. Mm -hmm. But when you see him show up in a tangible, physical way, mm -hmm. it does something to you. You go, oh, mm -hmm. he's, he's even God over this sickness, or he's even God over this disease, mm -hmm. and he is God in a new way for you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, I, I think he, if you let him in all your life, Mm -hmm. He'll be God of all your life, mm -hmm. you know, Amen. even in your, your public time, your yeah, personal time. So, that's great. Yeah. I love it. Now, you were sharing a, a story with us um, earlier while we were sitting around the table just talking about how this time would flow. And um, you brought a video that we're actually going to show and share with people. We have Jessica with us here uh, tonight. She came to the service. Um, she had a metal plate around her wrist, and uh, God did something amazing during the worship time, so we wanted to pull her out and just see, just let her give her testimony of what God did in her body. So Jessica, tell us, what what did you come here um, and what was the issue? Okay, um, for six, well, six years ago, I was in a really bad car accident and I had a metal plate and three screws placed in my left wrist. And I went through physical therapy and they told me that uh, I would only have the strength of an 80 year old woman in my, in my wrist. And while I was worshiping, I was just praising God. I came expecting, but expecting for other reasons. I didn't actually expect God to do anything for me, <laughs> but he does. <laughs> and uh, when I was raising my hands, I just started clapping and my left hand just got burning hot and it turned red. And as you can see, it's still kind of red now. <laughs> and uh, then after I started seeing and feeling a tingling sensation and I'm like, what is going on? I looked down and the plate was starting to dissolve and I grabbed my parents and now it's completely gone. <laughs> and I still have the scar, but the plate is gone. <laughs> wow. So w let's get a shot of this, Dan. The, this is the scar right here. Mm -hmm. And now the plate went across this way. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it was about this big and about that long and it protruded to a point where it was almost an inch off of my skin. And where were the screws? Did the you said the screws were along this side? They they screwed one here. As you actually, you know what? You can see the dents. 
Do you see the dents where they used to be? I'm sorry. And you could actually feel the yes, screws. I'm touching this right now. I feel nothing <laughs> I know, but nothing. flesh. This is actually kind of amazing. <laughs> Praise God. And um, and so you said you started to, during worship, mm -hmm. uh, you started to feel something. What, what Can you kind of explain it? How far down your hand did it go? Honestly, I just was clapping my hands and I was getting all excited. And uh, I started feeling a red sense, like a tingling sensation from the top of my fingers to about right about here and it just started burning hot and like you looked at this hand and you can see my hand is still red because God's still doing some stuff and uh, it just was on fire basically it wasn't like a hurting sensation and then I started going like this and I started feeling those screws almost pop out one by one now now you said so, you came here and you weren't yes. even believing for your own healing you no. kind of just came believing for and and so in worship mm -hmm. can kind of tell me what were you thinking about were you were you just thinking about God were you yeah. saying or were, did this even come to your mind no. Um, the, my wrist never came to my mind at all. All I wanted was to be in God's presence so badly and I was jumping up and down and having a good time and praising the Lord like you would at a football game, you know, praising for your home team. So, but I was not expecting God to do what he did. Okay. And one other question is, was there a certain amount of pain that you felt daily or was it no pain, just the, um, just the, the actual metal object? Well, when it was cold out, you could feel it, and it would kind of crack a little bit, you know? And if I ever had any metal next to it, it was a very weird sensation. As you can see, I've got a metal bracelet on. Yeah. There's no more weird sensation. And uh, as far as, like, the strength, mo mobility? nope. Um, the only thing that I was limited to was my grip. Um, they said I had the strength of an 80-year-old woman in this hand. Wow. And now I have was the same I mean, they said that, but was that true? You did? Yeah, yeah. No, there were things, like, I couldn't open... Uh, pickle jars with my left hand. I can barely open a pop bottle with my left hand. I wish I had a pop bottle and I'd open it right up. Um, and yeah, other than that, that was about it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Well, Jessica, we just bless what God did in yeah. your life, in your hand. <laughs> and we're just going to, the, the uh, testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So we're just hoping that people can see this and yes. take it around the world. And so that they know that they can get touched to, that God can dissolve things like metal <laughs> out of their bodies and heal what was broken because he's the best healer. So mm -hmm. bless you, Jessica. And you have a great night. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank All you right. very much. I haven't done this in so long. Do you want the mic in there? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I opened a ball again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cry. You're going to give me a Wow. Okay. Do I get to keep yes, this? <laughs> Thank you yeah, very welcome. much. That is so cool. Praise God. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so that was tremendous. Thank you so much for sharing that story with us. I mean, it's so amazing to see God work in that way. It, it, it makes, it's one of those things that make your mind go like crooked. You're like, what? How's this possible? And I don't try to understand how God did it. But the reality is that's not even the end of the story. Um, while we were interviewing Jessica, there was a man there that night who had heard about all God was doing in the city because it was our fourth night there, and there was a lot of people getting saved and healed, and he was having this conversation, and he said, God, I really want to believe. I really do, but I just, it's so hard for me to, to believe all these stories and these testimonies. Maybe if it was somebody I knew that got healed, I would believe. Mm -hmm. And a few minutes later, Jessica, his granddaughter, comes on stage and gives this testimony. She goes, I don't even know why. I wasn't even praying that God would heal me. But the metal plate started disappearing. So he gives his life to God while she's getting a testimony because he knew that she was in a car accident at age 16. He knew she had a metal plate in her arm and God, you know, was doing, and so oftentimes we don't understand the ripple effect that's created when we're obedient, when we allow the Holy Spirit yeah. to be with us. And it really reminds me of the verse in John 14, 16, where Jesus says that, he says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so important that this helper is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. This is who Jesus gives us. This is who Jesus has poured out upon us. Jesus even tells his disciples, he says, it is to your advantage that I go away. Yeah. Now, how many of you would think, you know, Jesus was a great advantage to the disciples? Yeah. But yet Jesus says, it's to your advantage that I go away, mm -hmm. which means that the Holy Spirit is our advantage. 
And if we would just take advantage of our advantage more often than not, we would see God show up in powerful ways, just like he did in Jessica's life and in her grandfather's life. That is so terrific. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Paul. Um, that was so encouraging to me, and I'm sure to so many of our folks who are joining us at Crossroads at Home. Uh, if you were to give a parting word to our folks who are watching at home, what do you think that might be? What do you think um, the word is for our folks that um, God would want to speak to them right now? Well, I, I would just, you know, I'm, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit right now, and I feel like God is inviting you on an adventure for more. You know, I've been there where you feel like you've, you, you've done all what you thought was needed. You know, you got the t-shirt, <laughs> you, you, you did the discipleship class, and, and you read your Bible, and you're such a wonderful servant of the Lord. And I just want to encourage you that if you turn your affections towards the Lord and just say a simple prayer and say, Holy Spirit, I just want you to know that you can speak to me, and I'll listen, I'll follow, I'll obey, and I will um, I'll honor what you do. And I just feel like the Holy Spirit will empower you and bring some giftings to your life that maybe you've never moved in before. Remember, you have the Holy Spirit and he has all the gifts. And so if you ask him for something, he is faithful to moving your life with that. That's tremendous. Thank you so much, Paul. We appreciate you being here. You're so welcome. I'd love to pray for you guys if yeah, I that can. Would be Is great. that all right? Thank you. Yeah. Well, if you're watching right now, just close your eyes, hold out your hands, assume the position, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd love to pray for you. Father, I just thank you that you're so good. I thank you, God, for all that you've done. I thank you, Jesus, for being here with us through your Holy Spirit. I just thank you for what you're about to do. God, I pray. For those who are wanting more, for those who are looking for more of you, that you would give it to them. Holy Spirit, that you would empower us, that you would come upon us, that we would grow in relationship with you, and that you would give us opportunities to follow you, that we could love our neighbor as ourself, that we could love on people. Lord, that people would be encouraged through your words in our life that people would be healed through us praying for them by your Spirit, that heaven on earth would happen through your Spirit, by your Spirit, through our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
It was great having you worship with us today, and we look forward to having you join us for A Hope and a Future. So you can just text XR to 313131 to get the communicator card and sign up for A Hope and a Future. And by the way, we'd love to pray for you right now. If you hit the request prayer button, we'll be uh, having a staff person ready to pray for you. Now, we're done being the church here online. Let's be the church where we live, work, and play. Go with the love and power of Jesus. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.